This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So that's it. I quit. <laughs> so I am officially ending my career as a photographer. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about why I quit and the importance of niching down and one big topic, avoiding burnout. What's going on guys? Look, I am so freaking excited, one, to be telling you this and another to just be documenting this quote unquote milestone in my life. I officially quit being a photographer. I did my last shoot last week and it was amazing, it felt liberating, and it allowed me to officially niche down and focus on the things that I really want to do in life. So I hope this video serves as an inspiration for some of you who are actually out there still doing photos, some of you who are trying to niche down yourself and get rid of distractions, and I hope that I can give you a little bit of clarity on the reasons why I did it and how it may apply to you. So let's do a little bit of backstory. For those of you who know me or who know me personally, you know that when I started dealing with cameras, the first thing I did was do photos. I originally got my first camera back in like 2013 when I was a senior in high school, and I got it to make YouTube videos, to be honest, and I wish I would have started, but I never actually did. And what happened was people started to pay me to do their senior portraits. And as a broke high school student, I was like, I can make money doing this? So I just dove head first. And I started off doing people's prom photos, doing people's senior portraits, and eventually I kind of stuck with it and I got good at it. So over the next few years, I started doing wedding photography. I started doing model photography. I actually started doing any and everything photo-wise that could make me some cash. And I was just taking a little bit of everything. And in the famous words of Walter White, in the beginning, I liked it. I was good at it. <laughs> so you may be asking if you liked it, you were good at it. Why did you quit? And to that, I say that is a little bit more complex. See, I started photos as kind of a hobby. I got my camera because of the passion that I wanted to have for it. And then when I realized I could get better and could grow with photography, I freaking loved it. So ultimately, I just wanted to do more, get better, and produce more art. Like it was an artistic expression for me with all the things that I did. And ultimately, a few things led to the downfall of photography for me. That was burnout, I was too cheap, and it became a distraction. So what does that mean? Well, when it came to burnout, because I loved what I do, I never saw it as you know a true means to make money. I always did what I did for cheap and I would have such an influx of people asking me to do their photos and I would love it. And <laughs> I started doing so many of them and I was doing something great for them. They were paying me, I was getting paid and I was doing something that I really, really enjoyed, but it came at a cost. With this new influx of people over the last few years, I lost my passion for it. <laughs> And losing passion for something definitely leads to burnout. So the burnout came when I realized I was doing too much and charging too little. Now, I don't say you have to charge, you know, an extreme amount for your photos, but definitely charge what you're worth at least. Like, I was constantly feeling like I'm not getting paid enough. And it was constantly looming in the back of my head. And when I was doing these photos, giving it my freaking all, I was always feeling like, man, I should have charged more for this. And doing that constantly and consistently just let me know I just needed to step back. I just needed to kind of let it go for a bit and breathe. So I realized I needed to step back when it became a distraction from video. When I started doing film and I started really, really loving it and deep diving into it and buying all this camera gear and realizing the passion I have for it, how much I love to talk about it, how much I love to teach about it, Photos became quite the distraction because I couldn't book certain film jobs because I had certain photo obligations there. Like, I don't ever want that to be a case because I love film so much more. It has so much depth to me and not ragging on photos, but to me, I had a skill cap. I had a place to where I was like, all right, this is it. I've kind of peaked and I'm consistently leveling out. 
and I, you know, quote unquote, I know it all because I can do pretty much anything I wanted to with photo. But video, I still kind of suck at video. And that is such a driving force. And it gets me so freaking excited to do more and to learn more about video because I see these people who are just absolutely incredible and I don't know how they do it. And that is what keeps me driving. That is what keeps me going. So whatever you do, make sure you keep that passion for it. And if you find yourself lacking that passion, but then you maybe need to step away and you may need to niche down into a different area of life. So these are things that you can do in no way, shape or form. Am I telling you to go out there and give up? I'm not telling you to quit. I'm not telling you to like stop doing what you're doing. I just want to make sure that we all have clarity and we all know that we're doing what we love. We are creative individuals after all. So I would propose to you that you niche down and eliminate distractions because when I did that, I felt so much more free. I felt like that I finally had some clarity and vision and I can tunnel vision in on film, production, teaching, just those things that are all related. I could finally do those things without having to feel like I was distracted. So focusing on what you love, keeping your mental happiness top of mind, those are things that you can do to just make sure you keep clarity in your work. So me, I'm gonna be focusing on making photography more of a passion again. Like I want to do photos. I love doing photos, but I don't like it when it felt like a chore. So I am going to be trying my best to express my artistic nature through photos once again. If you wanna keep up with that journey, you can follow me on Instagram at Chris Franklin Jr. It's just my name, but I'm gonna try my best to be happy with photos going forward because it's been eight years since I started doing photos and man, oh man, has that felt like a very, very long time, especially when you really don't have the passion for it anymore. So remember, do what you love and be careful about doing what you love for work because if you lose that drive, you can quickly grow to dislike the things that you love and nobody deserves that. Nobody needs that in their life. So my recommendation to you is stay happy, stay positive, keep that fiery passion with everything that you do in life, cut down the distractions, niche down, tunnel vision in, and be a good person. All right, my rant is over. I personally wanna tell you guys about today's sponsor of the video, somebody who is helping me get that passion back and couldn't be a more perfectly timed sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is something I started using years and years ago when I first wanted to learn photography, when I first wanted to learn video, I went to Skillshare and it just kind of made sense. So for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with freaking thousands of online classes to help inspire young creators, to help you explore new skills and just to perfect your craft. They have a ton of different topics from photography, film. I even studied graphic design there. If you want to learn how to do anything creative, Skillshare is there to help you out. The current class that I am taking, and I am very, very excited about this, my gotta be top three favorite YouTubers is teaching a class on YouTube. That is MKBHD is teaching you how to do YouTube, shoot, edit, plan your videos. And I am so freaking excited to watch somebody I adore basically teach people how he does what he does. And you know, you can't really beat that. So if you're interested in Skillshare, just know it is curated for learning. That means there's no ads. They are consistently adding new classes and you can just get lost in your creativity. And if you get an annual membership, it comes out less than $10 a month. And if you are investing in yourself and investing in your craft, less than $10 a month is something that you should 100% be doing. So if you are interested in furthering your creative journey, I will leave a link down in the description below. And the first 1000 people to sign up using my link gets a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. And I just wanna say thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making me grow my passion a little bit more about the things that I do. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm bringing you more content just like this every 
week. So you guys stay safe, you're loved, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.